Welcome back to the Pop Culture Discussion. I'm your host, Robert, and today we are looking into the world of Cyberpunk 2077 and asking, is CG Projekt Red's Cyberpunk 2077 the greatest video game comeback of all time? To answer this question properly and in the detail that the game deserves, we need to strap in for this lengthy video as we look all the way back to January of 2013 when CG Project Red got our attention with the very first teaser trailer for Cyberpunk 2077. Now, with The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt being one of my favorite video games of all time, I was extremely excited to see what other amazing future creations could come from CDPR. This first teaser trailer didn't show us gamers all that much, with a short but sweet cinematic trailer revealing that the game was set in a futuristic city, it was absolutely going to be violent and visually it looked absolutely incredible. Although this is a cinematic trailer, so as always you take those visuals with a grain of salt. The unintentionally funniest part of this trailer, however, was the release date. As instead of giving gamers an actual date, CDPR just put coming when it's ready, which is insanely ironic considering the game wouldn't be properly ready for at least another decade, as they would go on to release the game way too early and on the wrong generation of consoles and absolutely not when it was ready. But I'm getting way too ahead of myself, so let's pull things right back to when the next trailer and all the wonderful things CDPR showed could possibly be in the game. Five whole years later in 2018, after the first teaser trailer came out, CDPR finally confirmed that yes, Cyberpunk 2077 is real and they were actually making something groundbreaking with their second trailer that showed so much more than the first trailer did. Now this trailer hit us with the iconic guitar riff that became an overnight sensation and classic meme. I'm not going to show it here for copyright reasons, but I can show some of the memes which are just absolutely hilarious. And this trailer finally opened up the first full look of Night City, which is where Cyberpunk 2077 was set. This trailer showed gamers exactly what was waiting for them in Night City, with a super immersive look at the chaotic streets and characters that made them their homes. Although no actual gameplay was shown, this trailer definitely got gamers hyped as expectations began to rise. Up next, one year later in 2019, along comes Keanu Reeves with the next trailer for Cyberpunk 2077. Not only was this one of the best trailers for the game to get everyone hyped for Cyberpunk, but the Keanu Reeves memes that came out of this presentation ruled the internet for months, which also added attention to Cyberpunk 2077. Again, we got no actual gameplay of Cyberpunk 2077, but with this trailer, we did get a full main character reveal, some menacing side characters, and the reveal of what the story would be at some point in the game. This trailer looked absolutely incredible. With easily the best graphics I have ever seen in a gaming trailer. But the only downside that this has was the story spoilers with Jackie and V's death and the Keanu Reeves reveal. Yes, the Keanu reveal was absolutely enough to get people hyped for the game because everyone loves Keanu Reeves, but oh boy, was it a crazy big spoiler if you had no idea he was coming. This trailer also revealed the very first official release date for Cyberpunk 2077 with a April 16th 2020 release date. Turns out that was a flat out lie because of June 2020, two months after Cyberpunk was actually meant to originally come out, gamers didn't get the actual game, but just another trailer instead that gave Cyberpunk a new release date of November 19th, 2020. As amazing as this new trailer was, because it finally did show us some cinematic gameplay, this delay was definitely the first thing to annoy gamers about Cyberpunk. CDPR continued to add fuel to the eventual fire of the release date by hyping up gamers even more with a couple more trailers within the following months, diving into the epic vehicles that you can drive and Keanu Reeves' Johnny Silverhand's character within Cyberpunk 2077. Unfortunately, 
the November 19th release date was also too good to be true. As come that date, gamers did not get their hands on Cyberpunk 2077, they got instead, you guessed it, another trailer. Now yes, this trailer did show a lot more cinematic gameplay of Cyberpunk 2077 and absolutely got gamers to the highest levels of hype for this game, but the delay date was now set for December 10th of 2020. CDPR knew they had annoyed tons of people with these delays. And this is when they started to guarantee gamers with some of the biggest promises about the game. Not only did they confirm that everything we had seen so far would all be in the game, but basically CDPR said that Cyberpunk 2077 would be the video game to end all video games. And with it being the most immersive and impressive video game you will ever play and be a next generation experience of gaming. Would these quotes and promises completely backfire with the release of the game? Absolutely. But before we dive headfirst into the chaos that was the release date of Cyberpunk 2077, CDPR released two final trailers just before the release, showing gamers actual gameplay on the PS4 Pro and PS5. At the very last second before Cyberpunk 2077 was launched, CDPR released some actual gameplay of the game. And to say that gamers were absolutely underwhelmed after what was promised from the previous few years is a bit of an understatement. As nice as it was to finally get some legitimate gameplay of Cyberpunk that wasn't smoothed over with some cinematic listening, the cracks in the promises CDPR had made were beginning to show, as gamers seemed to be shown an extreme extremely nice looking game, but was this the game to end all games? After seeing this footage, that was still to be decided. So now, finally, we reached December 10th of 2020 and Cyberpunk 2077 is on shelves. Now the PS5 had only been out for a few weeks at this point, and if you tried to get a PS5 when they first came out, you would know just how hard that was because they were nowhere to be found. Nowhere near enough PS5s were made to reach the demand of people wanting to buy them. So most people still only had a PS4. And by PS4, I am talking about the standard original PS4, not the PS4 Pro, which was made with some stronger software. So when Cyberpunk 2077 came out on PS4 and everyone tried to play it on their regular old PS4, what happened? Well, the game either hardly ran without completely crashing, or it was just an underwhelming glitch fest. Gamers were absolutely livid with anger as they took to the internet absolutely slamming Cyberpunk 2077 for being one of the most disappointing video games in gaming history. CD Projekt Red immediately saw their mistake in releasing Cyberpunk 2077 on the PS4. So the game was very quickly pulled off of the PlayStation Network until further notice. Luckily myself, I had actually bought the disc version of Cyberpunk 2077 and I had a PS4 Pro. So I was actually able to play the game. Was it still a bit of a glitch fest so I had to play multiple missions multiple times as the game would completely crash every three hours and I would lose progress because it wouldn't save at points? Absolutely. But I did still manage to make it through the base game and did I enjoy my overall experience? Yes! Now I came to peace pretty quickly with the game that we were given as within watching the last few trailers and spending a couple of hours in Night City I knew this wasn't the game that we were promised but I still wanted to have fun with what I got considering how long I had already waited for Cyberpunk 2077. In all honesty, yes, the graphics, the gameplay and the glitches were extremely underwhelming, but the story, the characters and the world were absolutely incredible. And I could see that CDPR definitely had the bones to build the game they promised 
they just needed more time to deliver it. Luckily, CD Projekt Red didn't give up on Cyberpunk 2077 as they listened to the gaming community and got busy fixing everything they could to deliver on the promises of the last couple of years. CDPR also had solid proof that Cyberpunk 2077 could work properly and be amazing as promised as the PC version of the game didn't seem to suffer from anything anywhere near as much as bad as the PS4 version did. As CD Projekt Red got busy working on fixing all of the issues with Cyberpunk 2077 and trying to bring back their fan base, on September 13th of 2022, a little show on Netflix also got released called Cyberpunk Edge Runners. This anime series, set as a prequel to Cyberpunk 2077, immediately got people's attention as the fan base began to build again. The series was an instant fan favourite as audiences fell in love with the world, characters, action and storytelling of Night City. Cyberpunk Edge Runners also proved the full potential of what Cyberpunk 2077 could truly be, as plenty of gamers now looped back around to give Cyberpunk 2077 another shot after the extremely high praise of Edge Runners. And CD Projekt Red even put in new Edge Runner based missions into Cyberpunk 2077 to connect it to the series. Cyberpunk Edge Runners is honestly one of the greatest animes I've ever seen. And if you're a Cyberpunk fan and you haven't checked it out yet, do yourself a favor and give it a binge. You will not be disappointed. The stylish animation, legendary characters, banging soundtrack, intense storytelling, emotional ending, and the huge love and respect it has for the source material is just so highly entertaining, and it makes this series extremely memorable. Honestly, you're gonna be thinking about this show long after you've seen it. Cyberpunk 2077 was getting fixed. Although the gameplay and graphics were still rather lackluster, the glitches were disappearing with every update. Now, jump forward to September 26th of 2023, and CG Project Red releases Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, an expansion to fix, extend, and deliver on the promises of the original reveal of Cyberpunk 2077. Although Phantom Liberty would cost an extra charge, CD Projekt Red released a 2.0 Cyberpunk 2077 patch free of charge to all owners of Cyberpunk on this new generation of gaming. With this one patch, gamers finally got the Cyberpunk 2077 experience that was promised all the way back in 2013. Thankfully, PS5s were finally easy for us to get our hands on in 2023. So this update managed to reach most gamers currently playing Cyberpunk, as a lot of us were now gaming on this generation of consoles, myself included. The 2.0 update showed gamers CG Projekt Red's one massive mistake with releasing Cyberpunk 2077. They originally released the game on the wrong console in trying to fit it all onto the PS4. Cyberpunk 2077 was far too ambitious to be a PS4 game, as the experience promised was absolutely and completely a PS5 game. The 2.0 update added not only the brand new next generation graphics in an enhanced and improved open world, but a complete overhaul of the gameplay. The skill tree was completely reworked improved and simplified, smoothing out the gameplay like never before. Weapons, powers and parkour hit harder than ever, with gameplay mechanics crafting an experience identical to the original trailers of the game. The story and characters of the base game basically stayed the same as the original release, so if you love the story but had issues with the gameplay back in 2020, this was the perfect time to experience the game as promised, plus with a brand new extended story and characters of Phantom Liberty. Did the Cyberpunk 2.0 update finally deliver on everything gamers were promised back in 2013? Yes, it absolutely did. And then adding Phantom Liberty to the experience was just the icing on the cake for one of the tastiest gaming treats that you could have. CD Projekt Red's Cyberpunk 2077 literally had the greatest video game comeback of all time with one singular update. Cyberpunk 2077 literally went from a mostly unplayable glitch fest of a last generation mess for most people to a perfectly polished massively immersive next-generation masterpiece. 
after the 2.0 update came out, Cyberpunk 2077 took over the gaming side of social media. As gamers posted their new builds with mind-blowing gameplay in a sensational looking world, and people began to jump straight back into this 10-year-old game like it was brand new. Yes, technically the new expansion was brand new, but most people seem to be going back and experiencing the entire game and not just jumping straight into the expansion, although CDPR did make that an option. So what makes Cyberpunk 2077 so great? Well, honestly, there's way too many individual things and this video would just go on for hours if I had to explain them all. But at the end of the day, it's just three massive things. First, it's the immense immersion of a dangerous, delightful and realistic open world full of some of the best written characters and impressive looking graphics ever put into gaming. The mission structure feels completely natural, with the player getting set up for a new job, either through a phone call, a text or through a new friend they just made in a previous mission. Every single mission is important and personal towards the characters or the world building within Cyberpunk. The player gets experience points for every single thing that you do in any way that you go about it. It doesn't matter what you do in this game, you won't be wasting your time or the character's time. Everything flows together so seamlessly, never breaking the immersion of exploring the city, making every hour that passes feel like an experience and not just a regular or generic video game. The way you build your character up from literally a small town crook to becoming a legend of Night City through the characters you interact with, the intense situations you're put in, and the dangerous encounters you must survive, by the time the credits roll, it is beyond satisfying. Not to mention that this game has by far the greatest video game credits of any video game as the player gets phone calls from all the main characters' lives that you've changed throughout the game as they call you with different reactions depending on what ending you choose. Second is the massive freedom to play the game and every single level any way that you like. Every single level has multiple outcomes with the smaller changes to characters' reactions in the side hustles to the possibility of main character deaths and huge story changes in the main missions. A lot of the main missions are also either cutscene or conversation heavy for players wanting to soak in all of the history of the world and the characters involved in that mission. But for the players who want to skip straight to the action without a second to breathe, there is also a fast forward button that allows you to skip past all of these conversations like you were watching a movie. Take in as much or as little as you like because CDPR has made this game for literally every type of gamer. And this leads me into my third point, which is kind of a combination of the first two points, and that's the huge respect for every style of player that the game has prepared itself to have. Cyberpunk 2077 provides the exact amount of depth and detail for every type of player. If you don't care to look beyond the surface and you just want a main sci-fi story to experience in a shorter amount of hours, as you shoot first and ask questions later, you can absolutely play the game that way. But if you want to see what this world truly has to offer, and you want to hear and read the explanations behind why every single character you encounter is doing what they are doing, the game has answers to all of those questions as well. Shards are spread across every few meters around the map, explaining a story behind every interaction the player has. Most of these encounters may seem random at first, but the more shards the players read, the more you realize just how connected the city really is, offering a level of depth and detail into the world building like nothing I have ever experienced in a video game before. The relationships you can build with characters and the urgency of the main story deliver some of the most genuine, intriguing and devastating writing in gaming. Night City is a dangerous and deadly place, so friendships could end at literally any mission with the amount of violence and chaos built into this world. Wanna play as a gunslinger, hacker, speedster or tank? to destroy your enemies in your path, or even just talk or stealth your way out of violence altogether, you have absolutely all of those options here. And you can literally switch up and combine your gameplay at any point by refreshing your skills and equipping a massive variety of different weapons, keeping the gameplay fresh throughout your entire 100 hour experience if you wanted to dive that deep into the game. 
I am currently on my third playthrough of Cyberpunk 2077 and second playthrough of Phantom Liberty and every single playthrough has been completely different. I have chosen different gameplay techniques, different openings, different dialogue options, different endings and different ways of fighting my enemies. The older and busier I get with life, the less time I have to play through a video game, let alone three times. That is how much fun I have in Night City and just how easily Cyberpunk can pull me back in to play some more. In all honesty though, when I think about Cyberpunk, because there's just so much going on in that game, my brain is always going like a thousand miles an hour, so trying to slow that down and put it into script form was honestly way harder than I thought it would be. I know that I'm gonna miss things when releasing this video and months later I'm probably gonna go back and watch this video and be like, why didn't I talk about this? Why didn't I talk about that? But this is what I got for you guys today and if there's more Cyberpunk fans out there that want me to keep talking about Cyberpunk in way more detail than I am today, I love this game so much so I would very happily loop back around and make another one of these types of videos for the fans of Cyberpunk out there. If you're one of those people who have never played Cyberpunk 2077 and you're thinking about playing it or you're one of those people that played it back in 2020 and you were massively underwhelmed by it, I really hope that this video has convinced you to loop back around and either check out the game for the first time or to check it out again and give it another shot. I can so easily say that Cyberpunk 2077 is one of my favorite video games of all time and with the amount of hours and passion that I put into it, for me Cyberpunk 2077 is just the perfect mix of fun factor shock value and just being impressed with the immersion of the experience. Thank you so much for coming along this Cyberpunk 2077 personal history experience with me. Have you played Cyberpunk 2077? And if so, is it also one of your favorite games? If it is, let me know down in the comments below what made you fall in love with Cyberpunk so we can talk about it some more. And if you like this video or any content like this, feel free to smack the like button or the subscribe button. That helps my channel grow and I really appreciate it. I will see you all in my next video.